Hello, and welcome back to Bitwig featuring The Grid. Today, let's build a sequencer. So while I grab the Polygrid device, which is an instrument, uh, it's worth a note on what an instrument really is. Most of the time, an instrument takes notes in, and those notes help determine what the output audio will be. But in the grid, things are a little more complicated than that. If I were to get rid of the AR envelope and its amplifier, suddenly my triangle wave, let's make him a gentler sine wave, is going straight to the audio bus and droning. And that can be highly effective. I could make a droning instrument that has no regard for notes coming in and is just something I can control over time. There we go. without having to use notes to trigger. So in that same vein, let's make something that doesn't require notes. If we're doing a sequencer, let's go ahead and start with a drum sequencer. So an AD envelope is probably welcome. He has more of a big percussion behavior, only caring about when notes start and not about their duration. And then under the data category are our various sequencers. Here's Gates and here she comes. If I drop this on, to the trigger input, it will automatically be connected, and even more than that, Gates is already playing, and why is that? Because this device phase pre-chord is actually bringing in a signal. You can see phase is reaching the gates already. Where is that coming from? If I click the background to select the polygrid device itself, it has a whole section of settings for device phase. So right now we're synchronized to 16, 16th notes which sounds exactly like one bar of 4-4 time. So out of the box, any sequencer I insert will say, I want to last for one bar's time, and I want to be driven immediately before a signal is even connected. This is just a quicker, easier way to work on sound design. If I wanted to change that speed, I could say, well, maybe 8 16th notes. So now we'll have two cycles per bar, or twice as fast. So that's not a bad way to start. I'm gonna go ahead and insert a little visual. Since this is drums, we're gonna make more elements. Be nice to see them as we go. All right. This is our first element. Let's put it in red. Thank you, metronome, that's enough for now. And if we were now to click and hold Alt and drag, we can make a second element. All right, second element, give it a different color, drag it to the same output port and hold down the key to say merge this with a mixer. Fantastic. Now, the first thing we might want to change about this second element is to change the speed that everything is playing back at. One way to do that would be to go to the LFO category and grab a transport module, which looks a lot like the device phase settings, but that means we'd have two different clocks running. So a different way to approach this is to take the original clock signal, here is that device phase signal as a signal, and connect it manually. Because once things are connected manually, we've now got it as a signal. Maybe pan these a little bit while we're going. Once we have something connected as a signal, we can then process the signal. So now that we can process that signal, I'll go to the phase category and grab a phase scaler. Ah. So this, with a two to one ratio, lots of ratios today, is setting things twice as fast as the original. Maybe I want it half as fast, so let's instead make it a 1 to 2 ratio. And now if timing feels a little bit off, it's because as we adjust the phase scaler, uh, it's constantly processing data. It doesn't really pay attention to the beginning and end of bars because there might not be a beginning and end of bars. So one way to keep it in sync, it has that yellow reset input, is to take something like the transport playing module, 
So now, whenever I hit the spacebar to start and stop, everything gets resynchronized, which is usually a good way to go about things. So, now we've got things going half as fast. They're at slightly different frequencies. There we go. So now we've got different sounds. Maybe this should last a little longer. Make the first one a little grittier. Okay, a little bit distinguishable. We've got two elements. So, let's grab all of these, re-color coordinate them, click, alt, drag. Time for a third element. Maybe green. We've already got a mixer, so just route it into the mixer. And again, that reset signal doesn't go all the time. Stop, start, synchronized. We're gonna have to do that a few times because I wanna make this one maybe twice as fast. Okay, and if this is gonna be more of a hi-hat, let's get rid of the oscillator doing the modulation and maybe it's time for noise. about hi-hats is that they have open and closed behavior. This sounds kind of like a closed hi-hat as opposed to a sloshy open hi-hat. So what we could do is duplicate our AD envelope, but let's drive it with a different signal. Let's say maybe every mm, eighth beat? A clock divider set to eight. So now every time we have an eighth signal, it's going to be triggering this AD envelope, and you can kind of see that happening quickly. If it's gonna be open, we'll make it a little longer. Why aren't we hearing it? Because the output is not connected anywhere. So let's keep it inside this module, pass it to the oscilloscope, maybe hold down the control key to say, please add these two. And there we go. So we've got kind of our hi-hat element. We could even say when this one triggers, let's maybe pull back, give it a little bit of a more tonal feel for that second by turning down the phase modulation amount. Small changes makes for nice things. All right, so we've got three elements. Let's go ahead for a fourth. Select everything, option click and drag. Let's start things out. Maybe make this one blue. And we just need to connect the signal so we can hear it. There we go. Yep, clock dividers in different places, resets in different places. Okay, now maybe this is time for the... <laughs> Back to droning. Maybe this is time for the bass element. So let's go ahead, make this a little slower in general. Maybe one third the speed. Bring it down to a lower pitch. It's two octaves too much. Good time to hit play and restart the timing. That's not bad. So one thing that might make this more interesting as a bass to give its tone a little would be to insert a distortion module. There we go. It's got some wave shaping now. Perhaps each note we even want it to bump the distortion a little. Give it that shape. Ah, there we go. That feels pretty good. We could even come off it a little since we're modulating it now. That's not bad. So, something is twice as fast, something is half as fast, something is normal speed up above, 
and here we are at one third the speed. So it's probably a good time. Let's add one more thing. Let's go ahead and insert a pitch sequencer. So if we put this over here into the base module, I'm gonna go ahead and clear it so all my values are zero. And now when the attenuator's open, it's gonna sound the same for the time being until we put a pitch away from its zero value, its nominal value. Now, one thing that's funny, this pre-chord is running through everything as we go, so I don't necessarily want that. Since the bass is only happening so often, let's take kind of the phase version of the clock divider that we used earlier and say, okay, I would like this lasts for eight steps. Each time I get an event signal, only then go to the next step. All right. Could even make this a little bigger if we want to see it better while we start defining pitches. So we can start there. There we go. So our triggers are going, we've got different pitches, and we've got the start of a sequencer. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you again soon.